What is up legends? Welcome back to another video. A video which uh, I thought was yeah, too special not to film. Uh, I was here at Dream Car Performance, friends of mine here, and they, uh, they just whipped out casually a Ferrari Enzo for me. I apologize for all the noises that are gonna be around and put it in the sun so that I can have a look around this and yeah, I just thought this was so cool. We're not gonna be able to drive it. So if you're here for a driving video, hey, you're not gonna see that today. But I'm just going to go around and geek out because I'm such a huge fan of this car and I thought, you know what, I think some of the people watching the YouTube channel might enjoy this. So, why don't we have a walk around of a Ferrari Enzo, this particular Ferrari Enzo, which is for sale um, here at Dream Car Performance. It's just come in and uh, yeah, I just happened to have my GoPro on me and I uh, came in the turbo over there. There's a nice challenge to Dali as well. Twizzy, of course, always got to have a Twizzy. Uh, but yeah, I apologize for any noises there may be, obviously, you know, there's cars coming in, out, trucks, etc. But I just figured we could talk about this Enzo, which is gorgeous. This particular car is uh, special because it has its original paint job. So because these cars are, you know, 10, 15 years old, a lot of them will have had a little, little scrap, no, scrap, scratch at some point a little accident or just been repainted because the paint wasn't in the best condition or a uh, new owner wanted to change color, whatever it may be. It is increasingly rare to find one in its original paint color. So this one has that and not only that, but the original paint is in good condition. This car has 29,000 kilometers. So it's one of the higher mileage uh, Enzos. Although a lot of them, they kind of claim that they've got less miles than they do, but shh, let's not say that. Um, limited to 399 in the world, I believe there was one extra made for the Ferrari Museum and there are rumours that there were actually more that were made uh, than the 399. I probably shouldn't really be saying that but it's a rumour that I've heard, it may not be true um, but that, uh, that I have heard a few times. Now then, let's go around the car, talk about the design, talk about a few things which then trickle down to other Ferraris um, because yeah, this thing is an absolute beauty. I think this is the supercar hypercar of the last 20 years, which has aged the best. I mean, if you told me that came out only a couple of years ago, I'd, honestly, I'd believe you. It's so futuristic looking even today um, that it's hard to believe that it came out such a long time ago. So yeah, awesome, awesome looking, looking thing. It's inspired obviously by F1 with this nose right here, which just, yeah, it basically looks like there's an F1 car living within an Enzo, um, which is so sick. Obviously, they, you know, really wanted to push uh, how light they could get this car. So you've got details like the carbon fiber headlights. Those uh, ended up being on things like the 509 GTO, the 430 Scuderia, and loads of different cars. Um, so, yeah, I mean, loads of things ended up trickling down. For example, the gearbox ended up on the, on the Scuderia. Um, and uh, it's just so cool. Okay, we're going to start with the front. Let's look at these uh, tires, beautiful, beautiful uh, rims. I find the simplicity of these so cool, the classic Enzos. This is in the classic spec, obviously, red with the silver wheels. They all come, of course, with the uh, carbon ceramic brakes, early carbon ceramic. So apparently you kind of need to get used to these. Take a long time to warm up. They're quite bitey at first, but then once you get on it, they'll, uh, they'll be pretty communicative and pretty nice. Um, you've got, the, obviously, the Ferrari shield right here, the wing mirrors which are hanging out uh, kind of like, uh, well, actually, no, not at all like on the LaFerrari because the LaFerrari, they come out of the windshield and stick out pretty far. But interestingly, I was just talking pricings. I don't know if this interests you guys. It interests me. These are now, they're in about the same price as Ferrari LaFerraris on the secondhand market. They have been climbing up like crazy over the last few years. And, and LaFerraris have kind of a, a come down a little bit. Um, but it means that these are around the 2 million euro mark. Two, two, two to two and a half million. So um, yeah, and LaFerraris are around similar kind of money. So pretty impressive that the, uh, the, the older car is now selling for the same price uh, as the LaFerrari. Even though at one point they were around 1.2, 1.3 million. Um, imagine if you bought one back then or even less when they originally came out, they were way under a million. Uh, so yeah, anyways, carbon fiber all over the place. The front, as we saw, there's loads of details, which I find really cool. You could just geek out and look at this for ages, like the airflow coming through here, going through this little slit between the front tire and the front hood, coming up the door. I don't want to open and close the doors because I don't want to put fingerprint marks all over the car. And then it gets pushed right into this um, air inlet right here. 
the air coming down from under the car behind the, the front tire, the turbulent air from the front tire comes along the door, uses this little aerodynamic detail, bang, to come back up into here again. Any air that escapes that comes around here into another air inlet. It is all thought out to be beautiful, but also to have its, uh, its function as well. So um, yeah, looks awesome. Right, let's look at the inside because uh, it's pretty special on the inside. I don't know if you just heard that. I think there's something cool coming. Oh yes, Mustang, proper muscle car. Don't know if you heard the V8 um, just before. That is so cool. Those things are pretty epic. Anyways, uh, what do we have? We've got a fully carbon uh, monocoque, basically. Look at this, all carbon all around the car. This really thin um, carbon, which they, they've changed. I feel like it's changed over the years because on the, on the Scud, it's similar to this, but when you get into a Pista, it's a completely different weave. You've got the plaque, 399 limited production. It's not numbered. You don't get your, your number 42 of 399. You just know that there's a 399. Um, in theory that were, that were made. Here you've got this little thing that you can pull right here um, to be able to, to lift the front hood where you see radiators, you can do your front um, windscreen wiper washer fluid and all that jazz. Uh, these seats, now this is a slightly more particular thing about this spec is usually the front seats are red in Enzo's. This one uh, has the black leather interior which I think is quite nice actually. It separates the cockpit from the exterior of the car. Uh, fully carbon seats as well and it's got all of the original um, kind of bags and all this which would come with it covered up which is a nice touch. You've got the um, four point harness like you do in the Scuderia as well with the red seat belt. Right, I'm gonna hop in without putting any marks ugh, on the car because you can very easily swipe your foot across here and mark the carbon fiber. Now these doors, look at these doors. How cool are these? First of all, absolutely massive. Also, I forgot to mention this one getting in, they kind of cut into the, to the roof, uh, to the ceiling, so it means it makes it a lot easier to get in and out of this car than in other cars which have these kind of wing doors uh, which don't, you know, get rid of the ceiling, so those are quite hard to get into. This one is, is fine. Um, the doors themselves are actually pretty light because they're all carbon. See that? Fully carbon fiber. You've got little leather details with the Cavallino right there. But one thing which I find kind of cool is that you're still on roll up windows, roll up and down windows um, because I wanted to save weight obviously, so no electric windows. You do however have electric um, wing mirrors, so you can adjust those electrically because they're so far away they feel like they're in a different time zone, so you need this button right here to adjust those. When you come into the interior you've got the same air vents as in the Scud, so you can really see how things kind of got trickled down um, from this into the Scud. Uh, and the first thing that actually impressed me is the size of the windscreen. Really nice big windscreen in front of you with this kind of floating um, wing mirror, which is not in carbon, funnily enough. In, in the Scud, it's in carbon. So huge uh, windscreen in front of you and really low dash. So this feels really low in front, so you've got actually a really good visibility of what's going on. And, um, and because of the wing mirrors coming up like right there, you've got a good sense of how wide the car is, which is very, it's very wide. Then you've got the first kind of installment of Ferrari's um, steering wheel controls everything theory. So indicators on the steering wheel, uh, different driving modes, your front lift right here, uh, reverse button even, uh, ASI, I think that's switching traction off, race mode, all that jazz. They hadn't yet put um, your lights, which I hear, and your uh, windscreen wiper controls on the steering wheel. They've still got them in stocks, but with these weird, I don't know, I've never seen this before, but these weird kind of flaps which you touch to switch on and off the lights. Everything is carbon. So the, look right here, the, your steering columns in carbon, your air vent surrounds are in carbon, your here, the central uh, dash area is in carbon, the floor is in carbon, you just got these kind of stick on Matt, everything is in carbon fiber, which is pretty cool. You've got a little screen on the left, which will give you kind of your tire temperatures, things like that. You can see on your, your counters here that it will rev to 8,000 RPM, and it says it'll do up to 400 kilometers an hour. It won't do 400, but it will get pretty close. Here you've got your, air, your, your aircon controls. Um, pretty cool that it's got aircon, actually. I mean, a, a lot of the hardcore, even GT3 RSs of this time period did not have <coughs> aircon, or well, you could option them without. Um, 
So yeah, and then you come down here, the magical start button, which I was able to film the start from behind actually in the garage earlier. So I'll play that for you now, it sounded insane on a cold start. How cool does that sound? Um, it's also obviously got the stock exhaust because a lot of these will have exhaust change specifically from a company called Tubi and um, and then they sound a lot louder but for collectors it's good to have the stock exhaust. You got your hazards, you got your light controls, as I mentioned your electric um, wing mirror controls. This is called Enzo Ferrari's signature on a plaque in the middle right there. Uh, this is to control the seats. And then you got a little bit of storage. You don't really have a center cubby hole. You don't have a, a glove box. You just got this. This is all the storage you get, basically. And then a tiny bit behind the seats, but that's taken up by the original Ferrari bags. And you can see behind you that insane engine. Little fun things like look at the size of these leather uh, sun sun. What do you call those? Anyways, you know you get what I'm saying. Um, right out we go. How oh, cool is this look? So, so sick. You come onto these massive rear tyres. Don't know if you can see if I get the camera down there, how wide those are. Absolutely massive. Um, we then got, obviously, the carbon ceramic Brembo brakes around back. It's pretty sporty compound as well on these tyres. And then, you can see those aerodynamic details being continued. So the air getting filtered again through here. Another little vent, which will, you know, help um, evacuate some of the warm air. And then back here, I think it looks so cool, but it's also uh, got its function. So first of all, you've got the quad exhausts, which as I mentioned, are the stock exhaust on this model. But you've got the four lights, which again, you ended up on the 430, on the Scuderia and things like that. And this huge F1 inspired carbon, I don't know if you can see the weave there, carbon rear diffuser, which is massive, but just looks epic and has a whole dynamic to the, uh, to the rear of the car. You can see through the mesh a little bit that there's the gearbox right there as well. The mesh, I think, looks awesome because you can see the exhaust, you can see the gearbox, and then above here, look at that. You can see the massive 600 plus horsepower naturally aspirated V12, which is just so beautiful in there. It's also, funny enough, it's slightly lopsided, it's slightly to the side. I don't know if you noticed that, but I've always thought that was kind of funny on Enzo's. And uh, yeah, one thing that's really cool is A, you can see everything through this mesh, but also it's letting out a lot of, um, of uh, hot air from the rear of the car, which is pretty epic. Um, and yeah, I just think it looks so cool. Look how wide it is as well. And this spec with the black interior, with the red paint, with the silver wheels, it just looks so, so sick. Yeah, pretty epic. I think what we're gonna try and do is open up the engine um, so that then we can see see the V12 behind here, which I believe you do here, but I'll let them do that. Look at this, beautiful. We've just put the, uh, the engine up, it's champion right here. I clicked uh, on time-lapse instead of filming when we opened the, uh, the, the hood. But you can maybe see that this stick basically here is, um, uh, yeah, it's not a hydraulic system because a hydraulic system weighs a ton this is just a simple system, holds the thing up just the same and weighs a bunch less. Everything's in carbon and nothing's hidden. How cool is that? And also look at the condition of the exhaust, for example, right there. And then the V12, you can see all carbon fiber. And just for comparison, look at what you can see on normal cars and on 911s. That's all you get to see. It was better before, wasn't it? Look at this. Absolute beauty. But yeah, anyways, that's, uh, that's that. Um, I thought I would uh, just film this video quickly for you. Let me know if these kinds of videos with like crazy cars, where even if we can't drive them, we still do a walk around, etc. If that's of interest to you, or if you only want to see videos where we can drive the cars and uh, things like that. So let me know, uh, I'd be interested. I just came here to see this car and feel like a kid again. I remember car spotting back in the day and when seeing an Enzo was like the highlight of your month. So it's bringing me back to those times and I just feel uh, really lucky to be able to get up and sit in a car like this. So, uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm going to end the video here. But subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.